Chapter 4. Will the egg finally hatch and we'll see what it is. Let's get started. That next week went by awfully slowly. I went out to look at the egg about every half hour, I guess. After what Dr. Zemer had said about the egg maybe hatching, I was getting pretty anxious to see what was going to happen. But every time I looked in the nest, the egg was just lying there. Just as, I, as it had a month and a half. The hen was beginning to look kind of bored too, as if she didn't really care anymore whether the old thing hatched or not. That was a bad sign because this was no time to quit, just when the hen was in sight. If the hen had walked off the job now, I think I would have sat on the egg myself. Well, Saturday came around at last, but no news from the egg. I'd been out to see it so many times that morning that Mom said, A watch pot never boils, Nate. I never could figure out how grown-ups could be so patient about things all the time. We were having dinner and I could hardly sit still. Pop had been looking at me for a while. You know, Nate, he said, you don't want to get your heart set on this thing too much. If you get too eager about it, you're going to be awfully hard hit if that old thing doesn't hatch. I kind of suspect we're running on borrowed time anyway. I never heard of an egg that took more than five weeks. But Dr. Zemer said it might hatch within a week. And who is Dr. Seymour? Mom wanted to know. Just because he's a doctor, that doesn't mean he knows everything. Why, a city doctor like him probably doesn't know the first thing about poultry. That's right, Nate, Pop said. He's probably a big eye, ear, nose, and throat man from New York or Philadelphia. Chances are he's a specialist on the inner ear or something like that and hasn't been called to look at a sick egg since he was in medical school. Cynthia giggled. I can just see him asking the egg to stick out its tongue and say, Ah, I didn't see it. anything very funny. After all, if you've taken care of any something for all that time, you don't feel too much like joking about it. But Dr. Zimmer talked as if he knew a lot about it. He said he collected eggs or something like that. So do we, Pop said. We collect them twice a day. Besides, Mom said, this one is something new. I don't imagine he's seen anything like this before. How could he know what he's, it's likely to do? Pop grinned. Don't know what you co could call a six-week egg exactly new, except compared with dinosaur egg, perhaps. Maybe doc Dr. Zemer collects dinosaur eggs. Now, Walt, don't be ridiculous, Mom said. Just stop talking, everybody, and finish up. I've got a berry pie for dessert. They're the blueberries that Cynthia picked Thursday up at Thompson's Meadow. She went over to the stove and brought the pie out to the oven. She put the bread board down on the table and put, set the pie down on it. A little shiny trickle of blueberry juice had leaked out through the hole in the crust, and you could just see the good warm smell coming out. Dinosaur eggs indeed, Mom said. We didn't say much until the pie was all gone. After dinner, I went to look out at the egg again, but nothing doing. Nothing doing at supper time either, or at bedtime. In the evening, Pops talked a lot about going camping in Franconio Notch. Notch. I guess he was trying to get my mind off the egg, and to tell the truth, I was kind of getting ready to ease myself out over a pretty stiff disappointment that I felt was coming. When I went upstairs to bed, I tried to persuade myself that it wouldn't have been so much, even if the egg had hatched out. Perhaps just triplet chicks or something, and they probably wouldn't have lived anyway. In the morning, I crawled out of bed feeling pretty gloomy about things. I was trying to fasten my mind on the camping trip so I wouldn't think about the egg anymore. I went down to the cellar and got old Ezekiel out of his box. As usual, he flapped his wings and clawed around a lot, and I stumbled up the cellar stairs with his wings wing feathers in my face. I tripped over a bucket and mop that somebody had left at the top of the stairs and Ezekiel got loose and made a couple of trips around the kitchen before I could herd him out the door. By the time I got him out to the chicken yard, I was about ready to give up everything that anything to do with chicken or eggs or anything like that. That was probably why I didn't notice anything different at first. I just went over to the nest and put a little grain down for that poor old hen and started to turn away when I realized all at once that something had changed. The hen wasn't hit it sitting on the nest anymore. She was walking back and forth with a kind of wild look in her eye. And every time she came near the nest, she gave a little hop and fluttered away again. I bent down to look in the nest and, wow, there was something in there. 
and it was alive. It was moving around. I thought at first that it was a rat or something had busted the egg and eaten it. But after I got a good look, I could see that it wasn't any rat. It was about the size of a squirrel, but it didn't have any hair in its head. Well, I couldn't believe my eyes when I saw it. It didn't look like anything I'd ever seen before. It had three knobs sticking out of its head and sort of a collar up around its neck, over its neck. It was lizard looking critter and it kept moving its thick tail back slowly back and forth in the nest. The boar hen was looking pretty upset. I guess she hadn't expected anything like this and neither had I. I just stood there for a minute. I was surprised all I could do was look. Then I started yelling and lit out across the yard as fast as I could. When I busted into the kitchen, Mom was startled that she dropped a saucepan in the sink. Pop came running down the stairs with a lather over one side of his face and a razor in one hand. Cynthia was right behind him. For goodness sakes, Mom said, what's the matter with you? It's alive, I shouted. It's alive, and it moves around, and it wiggles its tail, and it has horns, and it looks like a lizard, and it doesn't have any fur, and the hen's running around and around, and doesn't know what to do about it, and... Hold on there, Nate, Pop said. You look as if you'd seen a ghost. What's all the excitement about? I was so out of breath that I couldn't talk for a while. It's the egg, I said. It's hatched. What? Pop shouted. It did? Why didn't you say so? And he ran out the door and down the steps, still holding on, still holding on to his razor. I grabbed Mom's hand and pulled her along, and Cynthia just was just ahead of us. She'd forgotten to put on her shoes, and Mom was saying, All this excitement over an egg? My goodness! When we all got out to the nest, Pop was leaning over there looking hard at it. Mom was still saying, Why we should all come running out here, only half-dressed, just to see an egg that hatched out? I can't see anything in there. It's too dark. Walt! Why don't you bring it over here so we can look at it, whatever it is. Pop, Pop was still leaning over, start staring at the thing in the nest. All he said was, by Jing, under his breath, sort of. By that time, Cynthia had squeezed in beside Pop. She took one good look and then let out a screech that you could have heard way down to the post office. That started the hen off and she began squawking and flapping around in circles. Ezekiel started crowing, and the goat started bleeding, and there was an awful lot of commotion, and everybody was walking at the same time, and nobody could hear anything. When it quieted down a little bit, Pop said, Nate, you better run into the house and call Dr. Zemer. He wanted to be told first thing. Remember, he's at the McPherson's place. When I got hold of the operator on the telephone, I asked her to ring the McPherson's, but she said it was only half past six, and that was pretty early to call those summer people. Are you sure you can't wait till later, Mrs. Beebe wanted to know? She's the operator, and she knows just about everybody in town by their voices. Well, it's sort of an emergency, I told her. It's for Dr. Zemer, who's staying at the McPherson's, and he told me to call him the minute the egg hatched, and... Oh, did your egg hatch date? said Mrs. Beebe. Well, now isn't that nice. Well, what was in it? Oh, gosh, Miss Beebe, it was real pretty strange, but you better ring the McPhersons because Dr. Zemer wanted me to call him right away, just as soon as the egg hatched. All right, Nate, I'll ring their number, but those folks come from Washington. They don't hardly ever get up this early down there. I could hear her ring the number, and it rang and rang for quite a while before anybody answered. Finally, somebody picked up the receiver and said, Hello, in a kind of husky voice. Can I speak to Dr. Zemer? Dr. Zemer? He's sleeping. Who is this anyway, the boy said. This is Nate Twitchell. Dr. Zemer said call him right away when the egg hatched, no matter what time it was. When the egg hatched? Say, what are you talking about? Well, we have this egg up here, and Dr. Zemer wanted to see what was in it when it hatched, and it has. He acted like it was pretty important. He said he collected eggs. Oh, the boy said. He said that? Collected eggs, eh? That's a good one. Well, okay, I'll tell him, but it's awfully early. Just hold a minute, will you? There was a long silence in the other end of the line. Then I heard the receiver picked up another. Hello there, Nate. That you? Yes, Dr. Zemer. The egg finally hatched. It did? Is it alive? Sure, I said. What's it look like, Nate? Can you describe it? Well, it's a queer-looking thing. It looks like a big lizard, except it's got little horns on the... There was a kind of whoop on the other end of the phone, and Dr. Zemer yelled, I'll be right over, and then there was a crashing sound, as if he'd forgotten to let go of the receiver.
That sure is interesting. Chapter 5 next. We'll see what happens. Bye.